Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 28th of May. Queen Maxima of Netherlands arrives on four-day official visit to India. Former Chief Justice Nasirul Mulk named Pakistan's caretaker Prime Minister. And 3.4 million register to vote as Afghan poll body extends registration deadline. And now for all the details. Queen Maxima of the Netherlands arrived in Indian capital New Delhi on a four-day visit to the country on Monday. On the first day of her visit, she held meetings with development partners at the UN House and visited Niti Aayog, the policy think tank of the Indian government, to discuss opportunities to expand financial inclusion in India. Queen Maxima of the Netherlands arrived in Indian capital New Delhi on a four-day visit to the country on Monday. Her visit comes just days after Netherlands Prime Minister Mark Rutte visited the country. The Queen, who is also the UN Secretary General's special advocate for inclusive finance for development, began the first day of her visit by taking part in a meeting with development partners at the United Nations House. Later in the day, she also visited Niti Aayog, the policy think tank of the Indian government, to discuss opportunities to expand financial inclusion in India. India and Netherlands have a bilateral trade worth 5.39 billion US dollars. It is also the fifth largest investor in India with a cumulative investment of 23 billion US dollars for the period 2000 to 2017. In news from Pakistan, after several rounds of talks between Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahid Khan Abbasi and opposition leader Khurshid Shah, the two sides announced the name of former Chief Justice Nasirul Mulk as the country's caretaker Prime Minister on Monday. This was the sixth meeting between the two, with the previous five ending in a deadlock. Mulk had served as the 22nd Chief Justice of Pakistan after his appointment in July 2014. Prior to that, he had served as the Pakistan's acting chief election commissioner. The current government is expected to conclude its five-year term on May 31st, after which the caretaker government will take over to hold the general elections, which are expected to be held in the last week of July or the first week of August. The caretaker prime minister will lead the interim setup and attend to day-to-day -day meetings of the governance. Moving on, a sit-in hunger strike was held by Sindhi activists against enforced disappearances outside the Pakistani embassy in London on Sunday. Sindhi activists have long blamed Islamabad of carrying out atrocities on innocent Sindhi people. They accuse any attempt to highlight the situation is muzzled. Members of the Sindhi community observed a day-long hunger strike in front of the Pakistan Embassy in London on Sunday. The sit-in was organized by World Sindhi Congress to condemn state-led atrocities against political activists and intellectuals in Pakistan's Sindh province. They shouted anti-Pakistan and anti-army slogans, alleging their direct involvement in the abduction of Sindhi activists. There have been over 1,200 known cases of enforced disappearance in Sindh province since 2010. The past year has been a surge in cases, with 160 people disappeared since February 2017. To release all missing persons who are human rights activists, political workers, <coughs> and who are demanding for right of self determination for Sindhi people, and uh, we demand. from Pakistan government to release all missing persons There is a long history of using enforced disappearance as a tactic by Pakistan to silence critics and instill fear among the families of the victims Sindhi activists blame Pakistani forces operate with impunity in Sindh region and any attempt to highlight the situation is muzzled The disappeared area often human rights and political activists or journalists who have spoken out against the government's policies and actions. 
In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's Independent Election Commission on Sunday said over 3.4 million people have registered to vote for the upcoming parliamentary and district council polls to be held in October. Meanwhile, election monitoring groups have questioned the validity of the figures shared by the poll body, saying the number could be a lot less. The Independent Election Commission of Afghanistan or IEC on Sunday said over 3.4 million people have registered to vote for the October polls across the country. The IEC has also extended the voter registration process for another 10 days. Meanwhile, election monitoring groups and former heads of the IEC have said that the poll body does not have credible documents to prove how many people have actually registered. در ثبت نام شرکت کرده چون هنوز دیتابیز نیست هم سیستم واقعی نیست آنچه را که میتونه انتخابات گفته میشه به دست میاره از طریق تلفن از کونه میتونه مورد اعتبار باشه اگر که میتونه موسیقی انتخابات هر چیز زودتر در قسمت بانک معلوماتی کار نکنن و واقعا در مورد کنترل و معاذبت و جلوگیری از این مسائل اقدام نکنن در همکاری با جامعه جهانی ما فکر میکنم که در آخر اعضایی که میتونه موسیقی انتخابات شاید حیثیت کمیشنرهای سابقه را به خود اتخواه حتی بیشتر از او و نام جز خواهی نمیلی دیگر نخواهد دارد. الیکشن اوبزروز هفت سید ترن آت آف پیپل ات ووت ریدسریشن سینترز کانتینیوز تو رومین ویک و دات لوکل لاو بریکرز و افیشلز این پروینسز هفت بین سین تو پوت سٹیکرز آن فیک آیدی کارڈز. بیسد آن دا آئی ای سی ستاتسٹیکس اوور ٹوینی پرسنٹ آف ووت once denied training to scale the mountains because of her exceeding age, Sangeeta Behal has made the record of being the oldest Indian woman expeditor to scale the world's highest peak, the Mount Everest. Behal, after making the record, met Indian ambassador to Nepal in Kathmandu on Sunday. Oldest Indian women to scale the Mount Everest, Sangita Behel from India's Chemu in Kashmir province, met Ambassador of India to Nepal, Hartip Singh Puri, on Sunday. Behel was once denied training to scale the mountains because of her exceeding age, as she had already crossed the age of 40, the age limit set for the training in India. But she didn't lose hope and her confidence and started working out on her ambition soon after. The 53-year-old was accompanied by her husband to meet Ambassador Puri. Behel's husband had also climbed Everest in 2016. This has never even come to my mind that I was 50 plus. People till today tell me you don't look 53. So age is just a number. So I have never let limitations crowd my mind. I think the main thing that we have to understand today is that a man and a woman is equal and any opportunity which a man wants to take should also be given to a woman. We both wanted to climb and we've both been a tremendous support to each other. With her hard work and dedication, Behel has now conquered six out of the seven highest peaks of the world. Earlier in May, a climber from India's Haryana province, Shivangi Bhatak, became the youngest Indian to achieve this feat. The holy month of Ramadan has spurred the scale of vermicelli across India. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. During the holy month, Muslims observe rigorous day-long fast and end the day with lavish meals. Production of vermicelli, one of the traditional meals during Muslim holy month of Ramadan, has picked up pace in India's northern Gorakhpur city as Ramadan approaches its peak time. Falling short of people to work, the existing employees in the vermicelli factories are working round the clock to make the festive month sweet for the revellers. Meanwhile, in northeastern Guwahati city of India, people were seen flocking stalls selling vermicelli, dry fruits and nuts. Shopkeepers too were seen flaunting national and international varieties of dry fruits like cashews and raisins. In Ramadan, we have come to the new year, 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 we have come to the new year. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. It involves rigorous fasting for about a month. 
devotees eat seri, a pre-dawn meal and break their day-long fast with iftar. Festive foods like dates typically serve as appetizers before a lavish meal is served after sunset. A group of women performed a form of martial arts in India's southern Kerala province recently. The form, known as Kalari Payatu, is the oldest form of fighting that originated in the province. Women are taking up the art to learn self-defense and also because it has health benefits. An all-women troupe recently performed Kalari Payatu, a martial art form widely practiced in India's southern Kerala province. Kalari Payatu is the oldest form of fighting which originated in southern Kerala province. It is the oldest fighting system in existence which includes strikes, kicks, grappling, preset forms, weaponry and healing methods. As I said, it's not only physical training but it's also uh, the mind, you're getting stronger from the mind and focused and um, yeah, it's just, I love it. <laughs> Earlier, women used to be very much involved in Kalari Payattu, but the number grew thin with time. With the changing time, women again coming back to the traditional art, as with self-defense, it also has health benefits. In recent years, efforts have been made to popularize the art, resulting in it crossing boundaries to join the league of other martial arts across the world. A doctor in India's western Pune city is providing free treatment to the homeless. The doctor visits shrines and gives free checkups and medicines to the needy. His main aim is to urge the homeless to work and become self-dependent. A doctor in India's western Pune city is providing free treatment to the poor and the underprivileged so that they leave the backing trade and turn their lives around by working and earning for themselves. Apichit Sonofni has been regularly visiting temples and malls where he looks for backers who are usually found outside the religious establishments. He provides them free checkups and medicines. He even goes as far as to take them to a hospital when necessary. Every day I go to each temple and mosque and I every day go and check all the beggars and I try to provide all the medical services to these beggars. My basic aim is not to provide the medical services. Medical, the provision of medical services is just, uh, just a road to reach uh, to their heart. And uh, basic my my basic aim and motive is that they should uh, work and they should not continue the begging trade. Doctor ne hamko bhot madad kiya aur doorle ka operation karke diya, dono aake ka operation karke diya, dawa dete, bhot bhot dawa diye, cheshme diye hamko. For this needy people, son of Ne is family who has been helping them for almost two years now. He also has a trust named Soham Trust, which helps in executing this initiative. His main aim is to treat and cure the health problems so that they can change the method of earning their livelihood. He wants to spread a message of equality and being self-dependent amongst the homeless. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Queen Maxima of Netherlands arrives on four-day official visit to India. Former Chief Justice Nasirul Mulk named Pakistan's caretaker Prime Minister. And 3.4 million registered to vote as Afghan poll body extends registration deadline. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.